What's going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. I'm going to be giving you a bit of an update video today on the EG4 solar hybrid heat pump. As you can see, it is fully winter time here in Canada. Uh, and as you notice, the heat pump is off and I've got it disassembled. So no, uh, no emergencies or anything like that. I just want to show you guys something. I had a bit of a thought back in the summer and I forgot about it until now. So I was wondering if these um, compressors have crankcase heaters. They do not have an external one and they don't have pan heaters. So technically they're not a cold weather heat pump. But I noticed in the summer when I have this thing plugged into the Blue Eddy, there was a draw on the Blue Eddy of about 45 watts. So I have a feeling this thing is keeping the compressor warm, just like a central AC would, kind of passing a current through the windings of the compressor as opposed to uh, an electric heat strip wrapped around the compressor. So we're gonna pop outside, I'm gonna show you that. And then we'll have a look at the utility cost for the month because my utilities come up around the 15th of the month. So uh, when I'm doing a wrap up video, I don't really have that information for you until about 15 days later. So we'll pop outside. It's a cool day today, not too bad, right around freezing. So I'm gonna take you outside and show you the compressor and then we'll pop onto the computer and have a look at the utility cost. So like I said, I do have the unit pulled apart out here. Everything is doing good. I don't see any signs of water or moisture getting in, which is always a good sign, but as I was explaining inside, uh, that's our circuit board. And down here on the compressor, we do definitely have some heat in it. So it looks like this thing definitely does have a built-in crankcase heater, or like I explained inside, it is passing current through the windings of the compressor just to keep it warm. That helps to uh, just keep everything warm, lubricated, and it helps keep the oil and the refrigerant separated. You don't want them really mixing in the compressor, so at colder temperatures they will mix, the refrigerant will migrate to the compressor, and you really don't want that on startup. You don't want these things to have to push liquid refrigerant through the compressor. This is another pretty good hint that the compressor is passing power through the windings to keep itself warm. When you see a manufacturer recommend you keep it powered up at all times, that generally means they want that crankcase at a certain temperature. So if you are fully off grid, that's something to consider. This thing will be eating up some power at all times if it's powered up. Okay, so this is an overview of my hydro usage for the last year. Now in green is last year, in blue is this year. Then the red line is last year's temperature, the blue line is this year's temperature, and those are averages. So you can see in the summer here, we did pretty good as far as kilowatt hour consumption. We were significantly lower throughout the summer. Uh, that's just running the EG4 heat pump every single day, pretty much all the time in the summer. Did really good, uh, lots of good sun. Now as we get into the colder months here, you can see our hydro usage is up over last year for sure, um, pretty significant significantly, but it is still a lot more efficient and cheaper than running gas. Now this is the breakdown for the month. You can see it is color coded based on cost. If you want to pause here, you can sort of see how many kilowatt hours I'm using per day. And the blue line is our average outdoor temperature. So green and orange, I am running the heat pump pretty much all the time. Red, which is my on peak time, 18 cents per kilowatt. I do try to run the furnace more so than the heat pump. So 571 kilowatt hours is my total for the month. You can see that sort of average as far as my neighborhood goes. And I paid $180 for that. Now that's up about $15 on average. My typical bill is around $165, I would say as an average bill. And that does include my water as well. So really the price is not too bad. Um, I'm gonna pop over here and I'll show you the monthly consumption. So those are my numbers for every month of the year. And if you look here at the daily kilowatt hour usage, you can see my average per day is around 15. Now, if we go back to last summer, I just want to point out that the usage per day in the summer was around 20, 22 for the kind of the main summer months here. So going back to this year, you can see we are down significantly um, around 15 to 16 kilowatt hours every day. So that definitely does uh, help out, you know, in the grand scheme of things, running the solar heat pump all the time in the summer. And lastly, we're going to have a look at the gas usage for the last two months. Now, they call this December's bill, but this is actually billed November 7th to December 5th. So uh, you can see here my total usage is 158 cubic meters of gas that is down over last year. But unfortunately, that was estimated. So you can see here they've estimated what I would have used based on the outdoor temperature. Now, when I got this bill, I actually went outside and had a look at the meter and it read 26013. So I only use 44 cubic meters of gas instead of the estimated 158 which is a pretty huge uh, reduction in in gas over last year now i'm going off the number 25969 from the previous month which was also estimated so i really don't have a good idea of how much i'm saving just yet 
I will, of course, share those numbers with you when I get them. Now, down here in September, that was the result of an estimated prior two months. So they estimated my July and August a little high. September rolled around and they actually read the meter or paid someone to read the meter. And I got a bit of a deal on the gas because I didn't use that much. They do still hit you with the $24 customer charge, delivery, federal carbon tax, and a cost adjustment. So if you live in Ontario, you know what a bunch of scumbags Enbridge are. They uh, bought up Union Gas. Union Gas used to own most of Ontario. Things were a little better, a little cheaper, but that's the way it goes. It's not the end of the world, but it is the reason I have a heat pump running pretty much 24-7. And this is what they call November's bill. It's actually October 11th to November 6th. You can see they've estimated 25,969 cubic meters in total, giving me 82 cubic meters for the month. But again, they're not paying people to come read the meters anymore. So that is estimated, which is a little bit irritating when you're trying to crunch the numbers and see how much gas you're actually saving. Once again, we have a total of $12 actual gas usage and a bill of $66.20. So I may look into reading the meter myself and submitting those. Um, we'll see what happens. I don't really want to give Enbridge the satisfaction, but we'll see. And to wrap up this video, I just have a quick clip of this thing doing a defrost cycle. I really don't catch too many of these on camera. I really don't do too many defrosts. It's been pretty mild this year, but just want to wish everyone a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. I hope you got through the holidays okay. You may have noticed the videos have slowed down a little bit. I just don't have a ton of spare time right now with a second kid and a busy family. So um, yeah, I hope I can get some more videos out in the future here pretty soon. But as always, I hope you enjoyed the video and I'll see you in the next one.